think we've already been able to share leads perfectly into what I would like to share this morning. And um, I want to start out by uh, reading uh, the additional verses from Matthew 13 that Larry read us uh, a few moments ago. And this is a follow-up to the parable that Jesus gave to his disciples and others and still talks about uh, uh, what happens uh, after the sowing of seed. So from, uh, as we see on the screen, it says, And he spoke many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow, and when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places, where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up, because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Our challenge this morning comes from that parable. Jesus is teaching the multitude with a parable of a man who sows seeds. He sows them indiscriminately on various kinds of soil, some by the wayside, some on stony places, some among thorns, all of which are lost because the ground on which they fall will not sustain their growth. Yet some of the seeds do fall, uh, as the scriptures say, into good ground and bring forth fruit, 100-fold, 60-fold, or 30-fold. The parable does not identify the sower. Is it a preacher, or a teacher, Christ, or God, or you and me as disciples? We could say it is anyone, anyone who may share a testimony that God and Christ have touched his or her life. The scripture does not tell us which of the sowings, if any, may bear fruit. It simply says the sower will sow, even on soil not adequately prepared for the seed. And much of the sowing will be unsuccessful, but some of it will succeed and bear fruit. If we accept the teaching of this parable, we should not be discouraged, even though much of our scattering of seed may be unsuccessful. But it also says that God will prepare good, will provide good results from our efforts as his disciples. Your and my callings are to share a witness of God and Jesus Christ, and thus sow good seed for the sake of persons with whom we may share. The parable also does not say who will prepare the soil to receive the seeds. If planting is important, isn't cultivation of the soil to receive it also important? But who cultivates it? Is it God or Christ? Does it just happen without anyone's efforts? Can the parable suggest that our Lord does cultivate the soil? and that he does it through you and through me. Your and my callings as his disciples include planting the seed by sharing our witness of Jesus Christ. But may it not also include our follow-up to cultivate the soil to produce the fruit. Our callings as disciples of Jesus Christ include sharing our testimonies and thus to, sh to sow seeds and to cultivate the soil. May I tell of one venture that Debbie and I shared not too long ago. You may remember Jason and Tamara Scott and their children, twins Morgan and Logan, and a younger son, Owen. They attended our congregation a few years ago. One Saturday, Debbie and I received a phone call from Robin Payne. Robin asked if we could help Jason and Tamara by transporting the twins to church school and church the next morning. They were six or seven years old. 
As a nurse, Tamara worked a night shift into the morning. With Tamara at the hospital, Jason needed to be at home with Owen, who was one year old. So they needed help for the twins to attend Sunday school and church. Debbie said, yes, we could provide the ride for Logan and Morgan. My first thought was to determine our route from home to the Scots and then to church. We would start out a little earlier than usual and we would take a new route. The twins were quiet that first Sunday ride. Debbie and I had not yet become acquainted with them. We drove to church and settled them into their church school class. And after class, Jason would usually arrive to join them. Our drives to church were an interesting adventure for Debbie and me for the next one to two years. They became a mix of friendly conversation. The twins happily talked about school and their friends, visits with grandparents and relatives, vacations, building snowmen, favorite games and flavors of ice cream, family and school ventures, and on and on and on all important to our two seven-year-old friends. Their church school class was a pre-baptismal class for several of our children. At its conclusion, Morgan asked to be baptized. Logan wanted to think about it. By next Sunday, he had thought about it and decided to be baptized. So some weeks later, our congregation did celebrate a service of baptism and confirmation for Morgan and Logan Scott. From our friendship with Morgan and Logan, this thought occurred and remains with me. On those Sunday mornings, no assignment, no activity, no sermon, sermon or prayer was more important for Debbie and me to do than to provide the transportation and share friendship with Morgan and Logan, their parents and Owen, and help with a pre-baptismal class and our congregation of Mission Road, that is all of us together, provided the foundation and support for God's continued blessings. Our friendship with Logan and Morgan simply suggests that you and I, all of us as a congregation, have a continuous calling and opportunity to provide a variety of ministries for one another and for others. The parable of the sower and the seed is for all of us. So may I add another thought or two for today. May we see and give thanks to God for the blessings we have received and by which we are blessed today. We are blessed to be part of a large world over which unfortunately is overrun by virus and pandemic. Given the continuing pattern of new cases and deaths and no promise for it to end soon, we could easily lose hope and give in to fear and disappointment. Yet, if we seek wisdom, we are also blessed by the invitation and suggestions of our world church leaders, President Steve Vesey and others. They have given us well-considered advice and direction for continuing our callings as community of Christ, albeit without the benefit of person-to-person -person worship and other meeting, meetings. I believe we all wish and hope it to be otherwise. And yet while we wait for restrictions to be relaxed, may we thank God for the blessings we have received and by which God continues to bless us and to call us to be his disciples. Some of you have been engaged in medical and other services responsive to the needs of persons affected by the corona pandemic. Consider this, if the worldwide pandemic had occurred only a few years ago, we may well have been without any opportunity for us to meet together such as we meet this morning. But to the contrary, we have been blessed with the development of electronic te technology that does let us not only meet remotely like now, but also to see and speak with one another. 
These blessings allow us in some measure to be together and to share in worship as we are doing here today. We are blessed with knowledge and skills of those who make it possible. Jonathan, Kenitha, Robert, Roxanne, and others. And we are also blessed with the fellowship of friends from distant places. Last week, Steve and Lori Holman and from, were able to join us from their home in Nebraska. And Wednesday evenings, Dave and Janet Chobar from Iowa join in, and John Blackman, who is closer by. As we look ahead for better days, my friends, let us thank God for the technology and the fellowship that lets us be together now. Let us thank God for these continuing blessings and look forward to the day when we can then again meet together in person. God blesses us as a congregation in many continuing ways. Some like Larry and others who have added to our church facility with structural painting and physical improvements. Many of you continue to give food and clothing items to Central Avenue Center of Hope, and Robin has continued to transfer them to the center in Kansas City, Kansas. And like our meetings here this morning with electronic technology, we meet for prayer circle on Wednesday evenings. And may we also continue faithful with our tithes and offerings and mailing them to Mary, our congregational financial officer. Starting this past week, our pastor, Karen, has launched us into a congregational program of phone calls to share good news, address needs for prayers or for other attention. My friends, all of this activity suggests to you and to me, as individuals and as a congregation of Mission Road, let us hear the calls of the Lord in our daily lives and share the good news with everyone. May God add his blessing to our continuing efforts to do that as my prayer.